you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So ride went up, it's been around a little while, and they decided that they were going to try to get into the folding bike game. And of course, the folding bike game is kind of dominated by one manufacturer now because of cost. And that is, you guess it, yeah, electric, the electric, which they've gone through a few different iterations of their bikes and now they're into the 3.0. So whenever this company decided they wanted to get into that action, uh, they looked at what it was gonna take to exceed the electric. And I'll have to say that they did a very good job now, some of these things can be pretty, pretty subjective as far as what one's got better than the other. We'll talk about that in just a second here. But one thing that can't be disputed is basically the dimensions. And remember the handlebars fold down, the seat does adjust, but these are the dimensions. You may want to pause the video uh, to take a look to see how this bike stands. It is short. Heidi's only 5'4", but uh, she rode this just fine, as you saw on the night shot there which we'll look at that a little bit longer a little bit later in the video but it's a, a, a traditional folding bike um, and very comparable to what the electric offers however this is a little bit lighter than the electric so that's something to be thought of because if you've got a folding bike you're most likely loading it up into something uh, meaning you're going to be picking it up. And there's a really cool feature on it that um, I've always had to have a bungee cord. I'll talk about that during the video, but uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the differences between the electric and the Portola Ride One Up and how they compare them. Again, one thing's going to be subjective here. Looking at the first chart that they give us here, uh, you can see right away the motor. Um, they've got a 500 watt on the XP, 750 watt on the Portola. I can tell you that the Portola um, definitely has a little bit more oomph, and it has to do with that low end grunt of a little bit more newt meters of torque. The range on these, I've never really cared to look at those and hold them true because every rider is different. Are you going up hills? How heavy are you? Are you carrying a load? Do you have a cart that you're pulling behind you? Do you have any kind of panniers that are causing more air drag? Are you a peddler? Are you Lance Armstrong? Are you me, this fat guy that just likes to push the throttle all the time? Do you like Jackrabbit you know, starts? I mean, there's so many different things. So many different things. So uh, whenever they talk about the ranges here, um, I've always said that I feel comfortable around uh, throttle only, full blast, as fast as it'll go, highest level, no pedaling, being a heavy guy in a big sail. Um, I don't feel comfortable really going over more than like uh, 15 miles round trip. Um, that, that seems to be what I feel comfortable with and knowing that I'll get back. Now, as far as the weight, it is definitely lighter. Uh, like I said, 59 pounds versus 64 pounds. The carrying capacity of the 3.0 from uh, electric, though, is a little bit more. It says 50 pounds, and that has to do with uh, the fact that it's made of heavier material. That It's a heavier bike, uh, but that 50 pounds really don't make break necessarily. Here you're going to see very little. Um, they're talking about the battery system. Uh, they're both pretty close. Again, the motor's a big deal, so they're going to include that in this graph also. And as far as the display, uh, the headlight, the rear light, you know, I see that they're pretty much the same, except uh, the Portola, as far as time of filming, it has an integrated rear braking light. I do like that because uh, sometimes it just takes a little bit of flipping the lever a few times, the brake lever, uh, for you to be, you know, seen a little bit easier, uh, especially if you're at night. Again, highlighting only the differences. Uh, we've got an eight speed shifter on the Portola and seven on the XP 3.0. That seven speed's an entry level. You see that on almost all the inexpensive bikes. Uh, the eight speed, of course, is one more up. That's the Altus. And the suspension fork. Um, there is 80 millimeter of travel on the Portola. Uh, I don't know what the XP 3.0 is. They say they don't know. It could be close to the same, but it's really, I'll tell you, 80 millimeters is a lot of travel. And that's the, you know, whenever you're going over bumps, how big of a bump 
will that thing absorb? And finally here, you're gonna see some repetition, um, just set in a different way, uh, but you're also gonna see a lot of similarities. Um, as far as the electric having a step over or a step through design, uh, I like the step throughs personally. Uh, the older I get, the, the nicer it is, especially when I have a rack on the back of my bike and I've got, a, like say, an egg crate or I'm sorry, a milk crate, egg crate, a milk crate on the back and I get a bunch of stuff loaded up on there. Um, you know, I don't have to swing my leg up and over that rack or kind of do some kind of funky move to get my foot over the crossbar. Uh, the thing is, is the step throughs make it also easier, I believe, whenever you fold it up. But, it, you know, electric does that for an aesthetic look. That's fine. The top speed, of course, uh, they're showing both equal. And then they talk about the torque again. Uh, you know, the, the Portola has more low end torque. So it should achieve that speed, even though it's saying the same speed, 28 miles an hour. It should reach it a little bit quicker because of that extra torque. Uh, again, the colors, you know, electric's only, as far as I know, black and white. Um, and the uh, Portola has three separate colors that you can take a look at, which um, I, I'm glad. I mean, the bike looks really good. We'll see that here when I get it all together. And um, the rest of it's pretty close to the same. You see the rear rack, they got a 25-pound uh, uh, advantage to the electric as far as what you carry back there. And then the range they talk about that's so, you know, subjectable. I don't know. I, I really don't want to say much about that. And the next thing, the, the throttle operation, some people prefer thumb throttle. Some people prefer that half twist throttle. I don't think there's a plus or minus between either or. Um, so again, it's a personal preference. And But these are the differences that really that stand out. And that's the, the motor is more powerful. Uh, the bike is lighter. Those two things you will notice on a daily basis. Other than that, I think that they're pretty close to the same. But those two things alone is worth uh, going with the Portola. But let's go ahead and get back to what I was doing and uh, show this thing unboxed. No, I'm not going to do a full assembly video. They actually have, I think, a video already online that covers that, um, which I like when the manufacturers do that. This was shipped to me FedEx. This box is about, oh, I don't know. It's got to be close to... 70 pounds I would guess um, but the bike itself is only like 59 pounds when I got it FedEx had got this out and in the rain they got it wet so the box has a little bit of damage here but I believe everything inside transported just fine I always say this is a testimonial to how good the company is based on packaging and how smart they are with their packaging and looks like they did a really good job I like this fiber cloth that's covering everything um, it's much better than a plastic. I don't know what this is. It does feel like a cloth. It almost feels like a, a, shop, a heavy shop cloth. I can't even really tear it. Using cardboard instead of all that styrofoam, a little bit more environmental friendly. I'm able to recycle this a little bit easier. And everything's confined in here. This is kind of about the size that you're going to see uh, folded up if you're going to try to put this into your RV or the back of your vehicle. So if I wasn't holding the camera with one of my hands, I would be applauding for their first attempt at a fold-up you can tell they have a lot of experience makes making bikes uh, first of all the coating it is really really nice uh, it's just it, it reminds me of old refrigerators <laughs> it's not quite avocado green but it is it reminds me of that kind of paint job you know with the old uh, ceramic coatings that they used to put on those appliances uh, the thing that i uh, enjoyed immediately was the fact that um, you know we had a couple electrics ourselves and I, I never really cared for the fact that I had to fold the frame to take the battery out um, it wasn't that you know these are like first world problems it's not like that it was overly difficult it's just I didn't want to and I'm glad that they put it in the manner that they did now you do need a key to remove the battery However, the key is not, it doesn't have to stay in and is not needed uh, to power on the bike and ride it. So if you're concerned with somebody thieving it, you're going to have to either remove the battery or chain it up. And I recommend the latter, chaining it up with a good chain. We have a big 10 millimeter kryptonite chain that we use. 
the locking mechanisms on this are a little bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, when you want the handlebars to go down, you push this button, flip the lever, and then you push this button on the front to release it. So there's kind of like two catches there that you'd be concerned with. And the same down here, you have to pull that lever first, uh, the little switch, the little knob, and then um, flip the lever open to fold it. Of course, the pedals fold up at that point. This is one of the best features. I always carried a bungee cord. And you guys are probably looking at this that haven't had um, folding bikes and saying, I don't know what he's talking about. What is that thing? It's, maybe it's meant to hold down cargo or... No, this is for when you fold up the bike. You then run this around uh, the folded part that is over in this area at that point, And it keeps it snug. It keeps it to where you don't have to worry about it unfolding when you pick up the bike. Uh, and it gives you actually more places to grab too. If it's connected firmly with the, uh, you know, the two halves together, you can grab, grab either half and lift the bike and, and put it where it needs to go. Of course, adjustable seat. It does have metal fenders. There, there are pluses and minuses to that. Um, the plus is you can beat them up pretty good. Uh, the minus is they're easier to rattle. Um, I'm not saying that that's what these do. I'm just saying that it's possible. Of course, you have disc brakes on front and rear, and they are hydraulic disc. Makes that a lot nicer. And the bike overall and its size looks really nice. It is, it is a very nice built bike. It is very professional looking. Let me just say that. Um, sometimes we get some of these folding bikes and they're just, you know, they're not finished as nice. You, the welds don't look as nice. The, the paint might be a little bit flat. That's one thing I, I really hate having bikes that you're out in traffic and you are trying to be seen in traffic. And what do they do? They paint the thing that you're riding black. The whole thing's black. So it's kind of hard to be seen. Now, when it comes time to charging your battery, of course, you've got your standard two amp charger. Uh, go ahead and hook that up. Let it do its thing. Uh, again, with a 13 amp battery, um, you'll go a little bit longer in between charges. This was the card that was attached that shows you the complete assembly. If you need any help with assembly, um, you can scan the QR code. There's some videos online that show step by step. Of course, they give you a toolkit to help you out with that. Um, a, a beanie cap. Um, this here I have to install. This actually goes back. I'll show you where it goes to. Um, it just bolts back here and it is a protector for that shifter so that whenever you uh, move your bike in and out of your storage, if you bump the shifter, it doesn't damage it. And then I've got a affiliates program thing, which go down in the description of this video. You can see there may be a discount. Um, like I mentioned, and uh, it'll also allow go through the affiliates, but more importantly, read through the manual. You're going to want to know all the information that the manual covers. Now, of course, your installation or your, you know, being able to assemble it is going to be covered a little bit more clearly in here, but this is a nice, quick, and dirty to get it done kind of thing. Let's go ahead and uh, see what this thing rides like now. I, I'm, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful bike. I, I can't wait to see uh, what it's like. Um, kind of wish we would have bought these <laughs> before we had bought our electrics, but then again, this wasn't in existence. This is just release. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. And then to turn on the headlight, it's just a press, of, short press of the upper button. Get the, make sure the kickstand's up, which it's not. And then we'll go. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Ooh, nice power. Now, to give you guys an idea, like I always do, I'm six foot tall, and I weigh about, since winter has been going on, I weigh about uh, 280 pounds right now. So, if this thing does anything, I'll be surprised. Wow, the low end on this is really good. It's definitely good. So, let's go see what this thing does. Um, not having a rear suspension, you can feel it, which isn't surprising. It 
So I'm up to 20 miles an hour without pedaling. And our concrete road, just to let you know, is rough. I mean, it's really rough. It's been rough for years. Now, if I pedal, that clang in your hair is the keys. It felt nice uh, as far as the price on this and what you get I mean you can't beat this I still say spend the extra hundred dollars and get the bigger battery uh, just because I'm kind of a range anxiety type guy I would rather have too much than too little again we'll look at what that looks like down here and man what a great bike they did a an exceptional job with this thing again Links are down below. Hope to see you out there. Bye.